Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to look at how to predict the products of decomposition reactions. So we have two learning goals for today. The first is to predict the products of decomposition reactions involving binary compounds, and the second is to predict the products of decomposition reactions involving metal nitrates, metal carbonates, and metal hydroxides. So let's first of all take a look at what decomposition reactions are. If you haven't yet watched the video on decomposition reactions, please watch that first. I'll put a link in the description box below. But as a review for right now, a decomposition reaction is when a single compound, so that's the key, you have one single compound, and it breaks down into multiple elements or simpler compounds. So you can see in the picture there, there's a compound with an element A and B, and then it breaks apart into element A and element B all by themselves. So there are a few types of decomposition reactions that we'll look at. The first is a binary compound, so that's when there's two elements attached together, when it decomposes into its elements. A metal nitrate decomposing into a metal nitrite and oxygen gas. The third is a metal carbonate decomposing into a metal oxide and carbon dioxide. And the fourth is a metal hydroxide decomposing into a metal oxide and water. So let's take a look at these. First of all, a binary compound that decomposes into its elements. If the compound has two elements, so there could be several atoms of those elements, but just two elements, usually it will break down into separate, to separate those two elements from each other. And so decomposition usually can occur through electrolysis, which is applying an electric current, or thermal decomposition, which is applying heat. And that picture there shows electrolysis, and it's breaking down water into its uh, component elements, oxygen and hydrogen. So we'll take a look at a couple examples. There's the decomposition of water like we saw in the last slide. So H2O splits up into H2 and O2, the two separate elements. And another example, sodium chloride, where the NaCl breaks up into sodium and chlorine separate elements. And you can see uh, in both of these examples, you're starting off with a liquid. So sodium chloride, we're used to seeing this as a solid. But because, we're, if, for example, with the sodium chloride, we might be talking about thermal decomposition. We're heating it in order to make those elements separate. And because of that heating, we're actually turning it into a liquid before those elements actually separate out. So that's why we have NaCl as in liquid form. And then the sodium will be in liquid form right after the decomposition before it cools down. Um, things like the hydrogen, oxygen, and chlorine tend to be in gas form, so these will stay as gases. Let's take a look at the decomposition of metal nitrites so, and carbonates and hydroxides. So normally, if there's more than two elements, they don't decompose into, for example, three separate elements or four separate elements. They usually decompose into groups of smaller compounds. So we're going to look at polyatomic ions to help us determine what's being broken down into which pieces. So if we start off with the metal nitrates, a metal nitrate decomposes into a metal nitrite and oxygen gas. And just a reminder that nitrate is NO3 and nitrite is NO2. So for an example, we have NaNO3, so sodium nitrate. It will decompose into sodium nitrite, NaNO2, and oxygen gas. And then we can see the balance equation there. Um, here we have things in the solid form. Now, um, we may actually have this in solution to make the equation work, but we're, or to make the reaction work, but we're talking about these in solid form when we write our equations. So we have solid sodium nitrate decomposing into sodium nitrite. Oxygen will be in gas form because that's the standard uh, state for oxygen at room temperature. The next is a metal carbonate decomposing into a metal oxide and carbon dioxide. So an example would be calcium carbonate decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Same issue with the states that we talked about in the last example. And then finally, metal hydroxides decompose into metal oxides and water. And there's another example, same situation with the states as we talked about in the last example. So calcium hydroxide breaking down into calcium oxide and water. 
So these four examples that we've just looked at are some of the possible types of decomposition reactions. It doesn't include all of them, but these are the four that you need to understand for this course. So let's take a look at how we would predict the reactions uh, for these types of decomposition reactions. So let's take a look at the first example. Here we have iron hydroxide, so we're dealing with the decomposition of a hydroxide, and we know the rule is that it will decompose into a metal oxide and water. So we can write here our product will be a metal oxide, so if we have iron and oxygen. Now the most common ion for iron is iron 3, so iron has a 3 plus charge, oxygen a 2 minus. If we cross over, we end up with Fe2O3 and this will be in the solid state. And then we have water as the other product in the liquid state at room temperature. Now if we'd like to balance this equation, we can see there are two iron on the, or sorry, one iron on the left, two on the right. So if we put a two uh, coefficient here, our irons are balanced out. Now we can see we have three times two, so six oxygen. We have three right here, but we have one here, so three plus one is four. So let's put a 3 here, so now we have 3 plus 3, so we have 6 oxygen on each side. And here we have 3 times 2, 6 hydrogen, 3 times 2, 6 hydrogen, so this one's all balanced out. Let's take a look at the next example. We have aluminum oxide. Now here we're dealing with the simple binary compounds, aluminum and oxygen added together, so it will break down into its constituent elements. So that would be aluminum, and that we're going to say in the liquid state because this would be, for example, th thermal decomposition, and then O2, which would be a gas at that temperature. So now if we want to balance this type of equation, we see we have three oxygen on the left, two on the right. So if we put a coefficient 2 on the left and 3 on the right, we have 6 oxygen on each side. For aluminum, we have 2 times 2, 4 on the left. We have 1 on the right, so if we put a coefficient 4, we're all balanced out. Let's take a look at the next example. We have beryllium carbonate. So we're looking at the decomposition of a carbonate. And we know that carbonates decompose into metal oxides and carbon dioxide. So if we're going to write our metal oxide, we have beryllium and oxygen. Beryllium has a 2 plus charge, oxygen 2 minus. If we cross over a zero sum, we end up with the formula BeO. And this is going to be in the solid state. And then we end up with carbon dioxide, which will be a gas at that same temperature. So here, if we want to balance this equation, we have one Be on the left, one on the right, so that's balanced out one carbon on the left, one on the right, that's balanced out, three oxygen on the left, and one plus two, three on the right, so that's balanced out. We don't need to do any work for that one. And then our last example, we have aluminum nitrate. So we know we're dealing with the decomposition of a nitrate, and that will give us a metal nitrite and oxygen gas. So here, we're gonna have aluminum, and the metal nitrite is going to be NO2, now we know aluminum has a 3 plus charge, nitrite has a 1 negative, or 1 negative, so if we cross over, we'll end up with AlNO3 or NO2 and 3 of those. And this will be in the solid state. And then we'll also end up with oxygen, which will be a gas. So if we want to balance this equation, we can see here we have 3 nitrogen on the right, three on the left, that's balanced. One aluminum, one aluminum, aluminum, that's balanced. But let's take a look at our oxygen. We have three times three, we have nine on the left. And we have here, two times three is six, plus two, eight on the right. So our oxygen isn't balanced right now. So let's try, if we add another oxygen here, for example, that's gonna give us um, not enough oxygen on this side. So let's try adding uh, more oxygen on the left and that will help us balance what we have on the right. So that's affected our aluminum, so we would now have two aluminum here. We now have three times two, six nitrogen. We have three times two, six nitrogen. And then our oxygen, we have three times three is nine. 
9 times 2, 18 oxygen. Now that we're dealing with a even number, it's going to be easier to balance on the right side. So we have 3 times 2 is 6 times 2 is 12 oxygen. So that means we need uh, 6 more oxygen to get that 18. If we add 3 over here, 3 times 2, that gives us our 6. So we have 18 oxygen on each side and we're all balanced out. So this is how you would solve these types of problems. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you predict the products of decomposition reactions involving binary compounds? And can you predict the products of decomposition reactions involving metal nitrates, metal carbonates, and metal hydroxides? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.